So the Pioneer SX1080 was a direct descendant of the SX1050. The 1080 is one of the big three in the 80 series. You have the 1080, the 1280, and then the Monster 1980. It was produced between 1978 and 1979, weighs around 48 pounds. Uh, pretty heavy for receiver. There is an ongoing battle between which one sounds better, the 1080 or the 1050. People say the 1080 sounds better, and people say the 1050 sounds better, and it's built better than the 1080. Having listened to both, uh, I stay neutral. Uh, <laughs> they both sound just incredible, in my opinion. The only thing I do like better about the 1080 is that it has uh, the wattage needles here that bounce around while you're listening to the music, which is pretty cool. The original price back in 1978 was around $700. In today's money, that's $3,142, which is a pretty penny for a receiver. You can pick one of these up on eBay, depending on condition anywhere. I've seen them anywhere from 1,000 to all the way up to 2,500 for one in immaculate condition. The outer bonnet here, I believe is walnut. Very nice, it's not a veneer, it's actual wood. And we have a brushed aluminum faceplate here. Uh, we're also missing two knobs, but we'll have to order some of those. That's just a brief overview of the whole unit, and now we'll get into the specs. So some of the specs on the 1080 are that it can put 120 watts into 8 ohms RMS, which is, that's respectable numbers. And it has a total harmonic distortion of 0 0.05, whereas the 1050, I believe, had a 0.1% harmonic distortion. I'll have to check. Um, it has a very large transformer here. It's hard to see, but if you look at my 1080 video where we did the service, you can see the giant transformer in there. Uh, I really like the way the circuit boards are organized in this unit. Um, it's very easy to access most things uh, and it actually helps with heat too. Uh, on the 1280, um, it feels like everything's kind of crammed together and so uh, the, like the power supply boards here, the two power supply boards are like right here and they both run pretty hot. So there's usually a lot of heat that generates in that area. But the 1080, I haven't noticed any heat issues. It, I've had this thing pumping for hours at, I don't know, pretty high volume levels. And it just, it doesn't skip a beat. Uh, the only drawback with the 1080 is that the output transistors are obsolete. They're mounted to this big heat sink back here. They don't make them anymore, and they don't make anything like them anymore, but there is a workaround to put in modern transistors in case uh, the original ones ever blow. This one's still rocking the original ones, and they haven't given me any issues, but if one of them decides to melt, melt down, then I'll go through the process of making a circuit board and putting on uh, modern transistors to keep this thing jamming. <clears throat> so that's basically it for the specs. I'll put up a picture of the spec sheet that goes into a little more detail about what this unit can do. I'll put that up on the screen. But uh, overall, it's, it's a pretty robust unit. It's very respectable numbers, and it sounds just incredible. So uh, now let's get into some of the functions it has and inputs and knobs and switches, see what they all do, and uh, let's check it out. Okay, so when you first flick on the power switch of the 1080, it has, a, it has protection circuitry. So when you first turn it on, it kind of does, a, in layman's terms, it does a self-check on itself to make sure that there's no issues in the transistors, there's no shorts anywhere, and there's no extremely high DC offset, which is kind of nice. Uh, so we'll turn on the power switch here. And it takes a little while for this unit. I think it's around 10 or so seconds. So we'll turn it on. And if in about 10 seconds, you'll hear the protection relay click. And that means everything's okay. 
and you're ready to play some music. So let's turn it on here. There it is. Protection relay just clicked. And now it's ready to play some music. So we'll start up here uh, at the top selection switches here. Here you have your speakers A and B. So you can have two sets of speakers that uh, you can hook up to this thing at one time. And you can have them both playing at once too. So that's all this is, speaker A and B. Here you have some filters. You have a 15 hertz filter that is used on uh, for your turntable. Some turntables produce a very, very low frequency. Uh, and so that just filters that out. And you have a six kilohertz uh, filter as well. So this, if you have a lot of crackles and pops while playing a record, that helps to filter those out too. These three you have for your FM, uh, uh, FM tuning portion here, you have a multi-path switch um, and that just allows you to hear only the multi-path portion of a sig of the fm signal it's mostly used for adjusting a large antenna if you run one on this you have the dolby uh i don't know what they called it they had a name for it but there's a, a setting here or a selection here that you can use that helps reduce noise but I think, I'll have to check up on this, but I think this is obsolete. I don't think they use this anymore, but I'll, I'll check up on that. And then you have your muting off switch here. And all this does is it mutes the hiss and the noise between stations while you're selecting stations. And that's pretty handy too. I don't have it hooked up to any speaker, so I'll show you that. But all it does is when you're in between stations, instead of hearing the hiss, this makes it quiet. Over here you have your input selections here. So you have FM here and you can tune in an FM station. You have AM, AUX, and you have two phono stages here. Uh, phono 2 utilizes the mic input here. Phono 1 is just regular phono input. And that's basically it for up here. I forgot to mention that there are also two uh, needles for signal strength and your tuning, which is kind of cool to watch them while you're tuning into a station to make sure that you're getting the strongest signal possible. So let's move down here. Uh, you have some turnover switches, which I think is very cool. So you, with the turn of these knobs here, you can choose between uh, what uh, level of, of uh, frequencies you want to play through your speakers. So down here, on the left hand side, you have the bass turnover knobs. So you have a selection between 400 hertz and 200 hertz. I uh, always have it on the 200 hertz setting because it just sounds, it puts out some good bass. And then here's just your level adjustment for that selection. You, here you have your tone switch. This will turn the, uh, whatever you select here on and off. Uh, over here, you have your treble turnover. So you have a choice between, uh, I think it's 25 kilohertz and five kilohertz. No, 2.5 and five, if I remember correctly. I don't really see it on there. It's kind of wearing away. But 2.5 kilohertz and five kilohertz here. And then you have your level adjustment for that. Here you have your tape monitors. So if you run a tape player, reel to reel on it. Here you have your stereo and mono selection your loudness switch, which basically just boosts the high and low frequencies at lower volumes, your balance switch to choose between the left speaker and the right speaker, and of course your volume, and then a muting. So if you don't, if you're jamming to some music and you don't wanna keep adjusting the dial, if you flick the muting switch, it'll turn it down. But it's actually a pretty cool feature. I've used that quite a bit actually. And that's all that does. Uh, it's a, Pretty well laid out receiver. It's got lots of options. Um, that's basically it. Uh, we can see if we can get the wattage needles to move around. Put it on FM, see if we can find a station somewhere. I'll turn the muting off. Let's see if it'll pick up something. There they go. You can see it's picking up something there. They're dancing around. It's always fun to watch those, but. 
that's pretty much it for the 1080. Uh, if you guys are considering purchasing one, I couldn't recommend it enough. Probably one of my favorite units. Um, easy to work on, easy to maintain. The only thing is those output transistors, but there is a workaround for those. So if you guys are per thinking of purchasing one, I totally recommend it. I hope this video uh, helped you out somewhat. If you guys have any questions or comments, please just let me know. And thanks for watching.